Do you remember last Sunday when Brother Jim was bringing the message, he mentioned that the Sunday after Easter can be the most down Sunday of the year. He didn't mean down in spirit, but just down in numbers. But I think you proved him wrong today. Uh, even though there are many that are out that we uh, have expressed their regrets in not being here. Uh, so we give thanks for your being here and this opportunity to worship him this morning. As we uh, move through this morning, we are uh, serving in or, uh, communion by way of intention, and I'll direct us on that when we prepare the table. The church uh, is divided, the church year is divided into seasons. And this season is called Easter Tide. It starts with Easter Sunday and it continues all the way through to Pentecost Sunday, which takes place on the Sunday of May 24th. That's 50 days in between. So what do we do? We reflect on the resurrection what it means in our lives. I was reminded as I was preparing uh, the, the sermon for today about a little boy who had come home from Sunday school and, and his mom asked him what he learned and he said, nothing. <laughs> so his mother asked him, asked him again, didn't you talk about Jesus? And the little boy replied, no, he wasn't there. <laughs> Well, we get to talk about Jesus, and we're starting with a very real dilemma. He wasn't there. I'm reading from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, starting with verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And Jesus again said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive any one of their sins, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side. I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus said, told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet had believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow in prayer with me? Lord, open our hearts 
and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That in the reading of the scriptures, in the singing of the praise, in the, in the offering of our prayers, and the word proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Put yourself in the disciples' shoes. Have you ever been afraid? Confused, full of doubt, ashamed, downcast, worthless? These are very real human emotions, and we've all experienced them at one time or another. Then you know just how the disciples felt. Just look at all that had happened. There was the trip to Jerusalem, the conviction, Jesus' death on the cross, the entombment of the body of Jesus. And now for all they knew, somebody had desecrated the tomb and stolen his body. All of them, especially Peter, must have felt just about as low down, dirty, rotten as a person could feel. Think about it. While their beloved teacher was being captured and killed, they had all just stood by and let it happen. Now he was dead, and their dream was over, and there was nothing for them to live for anymore. And yet, every single one of them was focused on saving their own lives. Scared that he was going, they were going to be next in line to be found guilty by association with and suffer the same fate as Jesus had. So this was the scene, and this was the mood in the upper room on that eve of Easter day. But then suddenly, somehow, into that room filled with despair and hopelessness, Jesus appeared and stood there among them. They could hardly believe what they were seeing. So Jesus showed him them the wounds <coughs> in his hands and his side. And then he showed them something even more incredible than the physical wounds. He showed them God's amazing grace. Jesus continued to love them without judgment. He didn't convey any disappointment with them. He didn't condemn them for their weakness and failure to stand up for him. He didn't shame them for their cowardice. He didn't even ask why they were hiding behind locked doors. He didn't say anything at all about their fear. What did he say? He said, peace, be still. In fact, he said it two times. Peace, be still. <laughs> In a very uh, conf time of confusion in my own life, and meeting with uh, a prayer partner that to, to help me through this difficult time. I remember that at the close of every prayer, she finished with these words, all is well. All is well. That's like Jesus saying, peace, peace be with you. But oh, there's so much more. He breathed a prayer of reconciliation and hope into their broken hearts. Broken and hopeless hearts. Receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you. Here's the good news. God is still sending Jesus to show us that we are forgiven people 
who are acceptable to God. The good news is that because of the grace shown in Jesus Christ, we are made acceptable to God. We are acceptable, warts and all, with all our failures, our mistakes, even intentional acts of harm that we may inflict upon others, nothing can ever separate us from that love, God's love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We read in Romans 8:38 that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, or, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And because he loves us so much, he does not leave us where we are. But he gives us his Holy Spirit to empower us, to equip us, to transform us into his <coughs> followers and representatives here on earth. That means you and I are God sent under the authority of Jesus Christ for a specific purpose. It is an amazing work through the redemption of Jesus Christ and the power of his spirit that we can have new life and have it more abundantly. Because he lives, we can experience fresh starts and new beginnings. That is the ongoing message of Eastertide. That we are forgiven by Jesus and acceptable to God. We are made righteous through Jesus' death on the cross. And he is preparing us, sending us to proclaim and show this good news to other people by our acts of grace and mercy. So where do we start? I'd like to invite you as an act of preparation to accept God's invitation to come. Come to his table this morning and see what he has done and what he wants to do for you. I'd like to invite you to pick up your red book in your uh, book holder and turn to page seven, <coughs> page seven, the hymnal. The Lord's table is prepared as it should be. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. 
And on page 9, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. him to preach good news to the poor and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make for them, for us, the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Father now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing 
in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. We now invite our musicians, our ushers, tech um, team, if they'll come forward to receive communion, and our uh, communion assistants, please, if you'll come forward. The table has been prepared, and all are invited to his table. Will you take your book again on page 11? as we pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery to which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.